doing me now? I'm still the talk of the town. Running the scissors, I'm hooking them down. Reach on the spots in the round. Can't hop out, then we clear on the crowd. Stump bitch, catch a op, then a gun switch. Gun switch. Glizzy make you do a front flip. Free low, make the clip slip. She fuck good, she don't need a tip. Off the Henny now, I need a sip. He won't be. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Brianna Imani, and we're here for another interview with Talk of the Town. And today, I have... OG Newt. We got OG Newt in the building, so let's get right into it. So, uh, I, where are you from? I was born in the Bronx, you know, Montefiore Hospital, you know. Mm -hmm. I used to live over there, chill down the road, but then I moved up to what, Rockland County. Moved up to, like, it's like 20 minutes away from there. Okay, okay. So you moved to Rockland County and what is it like? I mean, you know, we based in the city. So what is it like living out there? You know, I'm not even gonna lie, it's not like how people, you know, picture upstate New York, you feel me? Like, okay. It's um it's a little it's a little it's a little gritty, a little black. I mean I'm, I'm not even gonna lie, there's a lot of gentrified areas and shit like that, but mm -hmm. the place I'll be at, you know, I treat triple mad diverse people with the Caribbean. So I mean, I'm sure, but you know, I can't help. So I went to school in Albany, so I was living in Albany for a little while. But I can't help but think about, you know, they have a meme out, and it's like when niggas say they from New York and they be from uh, but that's not Rockland County. They don't give us credit though. They don't give us our credit. So like credit for what? Majority, of, majority of niggas in Rockland County or people from the city that moved up to Rockland County think shit was gonna be sweet and niggas still doing the same shit. Okay. You feel me? So like, um. It's not even like, we're not even upstate like that. If we're going to be completely honest, upstate is Albany. Like, you took a 20 minute drive, <laughs> if that's not upstate, you were like right there. Okay. Like, give you like two, three hours, that's upstate. Give you Albany, Syracuse, that's upstate. We right there. We right there. But I understand what y'all mean because, you know, ain't shut you up there. So. Okay, I see, I see where you're going. So, what's the music scene looking like in Rockland? Are there any artists that are like up and coming from out oh, yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, I got a couple, a couple of mine, you know. My friend Apollo Menace, you feel me? I got she, that's my man right there, me and him. We did a collab tape this year, earlier this year. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. Love it, love making music with him and everything like that. But yeah, basically, yeah, them two, I really listen to them a lot. Um, Probably like, who else? I guess like Hank Dollars. I give it okay. to him. And um, I say like GP Easy, a couple of them. You know, I'm probably forgetting some people's names, but. And that's okay, just, that's okay, that's okay. I'll shout y'all out. So, yeah, they, you just name who came top of mind. That's fine. So yeah. how did you get into music? I'm not even gonna lie. It was partially this this man right there. Okay, I'm she. But um, I was always like involved with music and shit. Like growing up, like I know how to play like the violin, piano, the drums, and shit like that. Mm -hmm. My mom, when I was younger, had me like in like church choir and shit like that. So I was like love music and shit. But like writing rap music and everything came along like, probably like in high school. Okay, so I always think, like, it's so funny to me because there are so many artists that say the same thing. Like, they came from church choir, playing instruments and stuff like that. So, how did you get from singing for Jesus to talking about shooting niggas? How did, how did that transition work? Like, life changes. Life changes. I mean, still love God, but um, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I hate niggas, too. That's just okay, it. I mean, that's, that's fair. That's fair. So, what was the first song that you ever made? First song I ever made, oh my goodness, it was probably when I was in high school, mm -hmm. and it was called like um, OG New Chamberlain, and it was a. a remix I'm weak because they, <laughs> y'all can't see the friends in the bag, but they bump into the imaginary song, so Yo, it had to be a bob. I'm I guessing. You, in Ramapo, we had at like during the time in high school, it was probably like my senior year. You feel me? Everybody started making their own little songs and everything like that, uh -huh. and then so I remixed at the time. Chief Key made Social Chamberlain, so mm -hmm. I remixed the song. And people were singing back the song lyrics to me. They're like, oh, shit, this shit's actually kind of catchy. Ah. So you feel me? That was the first song I ever made. See, I'm glad that you said that. Because I was going to ask you about, like, I noticed that you remixed a lot of songs. I saw you did, like, Heartbroken and yeah. Brotherly Love and stuff like that. So is that, like, what you like to do? Like, remix the songs or? I'm not even going to lie. Sometimes I hear a beat and I'm like, nah, I feel I can do better. Or I can, someone like, I can match a certain energy. So and do I can you? Make the song my own. So do you feel like you match like K Flock and them's energy for brotherly love? I don't say I match it because I'm not gonna lie, these niggas was snapping on that song. But you know, I, I feel like I did good in my own lane. You feel me? Okay. I fuck with the way they were doing shit too. I'm not gonna lie, WB and K Flock and that song going crazy. Okay, okay, okay. So I so you post a lot of different stuff like on social media. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I see you that like on YouTube you'll post your music and then sometimes you'll like live stream and like do like smash the yeah. pass videos and stuff like that. So like 
what is what would you if you had to like categorize like what your lane was like what what do you do what is it that you know right now right now i consider myself entertainer okay like i do a little bit of everything you feel me like i started out doing youtube mm-hmm. you feel me i was on youtube for a little while then i went to comedy i did a little comic a couple comedy shows and you know i went out to rap because you know it's right now i feel shit that i went through and everything like that mm-hmm. so you know you feel me i'm just like i have a love for all of them because i'm not gonna lie I love doing youtube i feel like i'm a funny nigga at times so i mm-hmm. like comedy and you know i love rapping regardless of what happens you know you know, i love music all around that's my that's my passion so okay you know, first first number one first is an artist number one is first artist okay that's the second so where do you think you get most of your support most of my support yeah where does it come from like the youtube the music oh yeah it, it comes from like youtube probably probably youtube and tiktok i'm not gonna lie tiktok had my music jumping for a minute okay so let me rephrase so okay so tiktok that's good to know of course but out of your comedy your oh. music and whatever else like what where do you where are your supporters mostly where do they lie oh with music okay with music. oh well then that's good yeah. okay okay so you already mentioned your bro over here, and I saw that y'all dropped uh, like the My Brother's Keeper album. So, what was the reception for that? How how did that go? It went. I think it went went about went about good. Went about good. I mean, like we could we didn't have like as much time to like really like press that we were dropping the shit. Mm-hmm. So you feel me? But at the same time, like the reception for it was great. Like everybody that we heard, like listened to the album from start to finish, they said they enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. And you know that's all I really wanted. And, and, okay. Like, for everybody. To whole tape start to finish and hear what we were saying because we took our time making each and every song okay you know, you so what was that okay so you made the album together was that your first album Nah, my first album was um the grim reaper okay the grim reaper right okay so now your most recent project is with him yeah. do you have another one coming out yeah i have another one coming out sometime like next year okay next year like probably like Okay, all right, so we have some time for that. So we're going to talk about this, the most recent one, real quick. So do you think that there's any, like, you mentioned TikTok. You said your songs are doing numbers on TikTok. Are there any, like, TikTok-worthy, potentially viral tracks that's on this album that you just dropped? I got to think about that. I got to think about that. I got to discuss, but... um. Not discuss. You don't know your album. I, gotta, I mean, come on. Probably, probably, I'll say the vaccine or, um, what what's it, what's it called, um... Uh, what's the song with me, Kevin, and um, no, me, Kevin, and, Sh- and Sheed. What's the song? Ready to believe. Yeah. All right. So, how you don't know the name of? The I'm songs sorry. I'm, just forget- I'm a little forgetful. I'm a little forgetful. All right. So, how long? How long did it take for y'all to work on the album? How long did? It, how long did the whole creative process take? We started talking about that album probably like the beginning of last year, and then we finished it probably this year September. Okay. All right, well, next time I see you, you better know them names on them songs. Nah, my fault. Right. My fault. I just didn't know. I'm just looking up. I'm just looking up. <laughs> All right, so what's your favorite song on the album? Favorite song on the album? I'll give it to either. I'll give it to Dramatic or The Vaccine. Either or. Okay. And now, what's your hardest bar on the album? Um, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Um, yeah, back in our past. Uh, fuck, what's... All right, I'm gonna give you five seconds. Let me think, let me think, let me think, let me think. Three. Let me think. One. All right, your time is up. Damn, I can't even think of shit. Damn, you can't think of your hardest part. It's okay. That just gives you more time to think about it the next time you get asked the question. So, how do you feel about the whole, you know, right now, the drill wave is going crazy. Um, what you, what's your thoughts on it? I mean, I know you, would you consider yourself to be a drill rapper? I consider myself a rapper. Okay. I like drill though. So okay. You know, I do drill, but yeah. Okay, okay. So what's your thoughts on the on the music scene right now? Um, I'm not gonna lie, the Bronx got on lock, like as far as like drill rapping in general. Mm-hmm. I feel like almost every Bronx artist that's coming out making drill music is like good or somewhat decent, that like to the ears of people. They do so much different shit, like the sample beats, I love them. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie. Because it brings back like a lot of like different music that we didn't even think about like mm-hmm. throwback music that nobody even thought about for a minute yeah so like 
always appreciate that. Okay, so I'm putting you on the spot again because the last time I put you on the spot, you didn't really pull through. So if you fuck with the samples and stuff, so if you had to choose one song to sample in one of your songs, what would it be? One of my songs to sample? Not one of your songs, just a, a, song, a song that you would want to sample for one of your songs. Uh, I was talking to my man about this the other day. It's a song, it's like, it's a brand new song. It's called T.O.K. Footprints. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. All right, that's dope. So, outside of drill, because I kind of just brought that up, but outside of drill, what other music do you listen to? Uh, I listen to a little bit of everything, I'm not going to lie. Like, I listen to, listen to a little Dirk, obviously, Lil Baby. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a little mainstream niggas. I listen to a little Easy, G Herbo, um, Kendrick Lamar, Drake. I mean, I listen to, like, basically, like, everything mm -hmm. that sounds, like, somewhat appealing, but heavily, like, Meek Mill. Would you say that they influence your music? at all a little bit like meek mill the way that he tells certain stories and explains his music and his pain mm -hmm. i feel like i can put into my music in somewhat that form like i really do appreciate the way that he makes music it touches my life so differently in my whole life. so it touches your life so differently so if you were making music let's say 20 years right you 20 years of being an artist you making music and you're not seeing no profit you're not seeing nothing you're not getting booked for shows nothing would you still keep making music i'll keep making music until the day i die you know, okay this is something that i do for myself one mm -hmm. two like regardless like i believe that i'm good enough to pop like i don't give a fuck what anybody says that you know if it doesn't happen mm -hmm. i'm gonna still keep pushing it Right. Not to say that you weren't. That was, of course, hypothetical. But yeah. what do you think it takes for an artist to pop? You got to stand out, do something different, be different, be consistently different and do it. Okay. So what about you is different? What about me is different? Mm -hmm. Um, Me, personally, I believe my music, you can't categorize it. Like, there's not a single thing that I cannot do as terms of music. I made too many different forms of music that, like, you listen to my music, you can hear a drill song. The next song is going to be a heartbreak song. Mm -hmm. The next song could be a party song to the Jersey Club beat. And the next song is going to be some 90s throwback slow song with some other features that you didn't even think about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, me personally, there's not a lot of niggas doing that. There's not a lot of people that can keep switching different kinds of music and make it sound good or presentable to people. Okay, so it's giving versatility. Yeah. Okay, that's dope. All right, so if you had to pick, like, your dream feature, what would that be? Dream feature, dream feature. Realistically or unrealistically? Give me one of each. One of each. Unrealistically, G Herbo. G Herbo, unrealistically. Unrealistically. I'm surprised that out of, okay, all right. Why do you think that that's unrealistic? I'm just saying, like, present tense right now. Okay. But, you know, I can dream, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I want that to happen. But realistically, realistically, let me see. Realistically, um, not going to lie. I will say, like, probably, like, K-Flock, Dougie B. Okay. Um, or Juana Bills, you feel me? Either way. Okay. So, those are your realistic features. Mm -hmm. So, that leads me to the Would you pay for a feature? Oh, yeah, of course. What's, like, your limit? For paying for a feature. How, what's like the price that like after that is clicked? To me, there's no price depending on the artist, you feel me? So if the artist is worth the money, I already know like I'm going to pay that. So you up it. Okay. So then why is he ever unrealistic? Right. Nah, I mean, he's not unrealistic, you feel me? I'm just saying, you feel me? No, but okay. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I know. I feel like you kind of like selling yourself short a little bit with that I one. I might be, I might be. It's not unrealistic, you feel me? So, fake, yeah, G Herbo is a realistic one. So, I'll put G Herbo first. Okay. When you say unrealistic, I mean someone that's dead or gone or something. Oh, unrealistic then. Somebody that's dead, Michael Jackson. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Come on. I, okay. Come on now. That's Mike. Yeah. Hey. So, okay. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. All right, so if you had to name your top five artists right now that are alive, I'm assuming Michael Jackson is one of them, but we're going to take him out. Mm -hmm. um, what are your, who are your top five artists right now? Top five that are alive. All categories? Mm -hmm. All right. Number one, number one, it's going to be a little biased. I'm going to catch Lamar. Number two, Drake. Number three, J. 
Cole. Number four, Chris Brown. Number five, sheesh. I'll put Kanye West. Hmm. Okay, that's a solid list. Okay, all right, all right. So, of course, you know, we're in December, mid-December at that. Christmas is right around the corner. The year's about to end. So, what are your plans going into the new year? My plans is try to record and roll out as I, like, plan, if you feel me, like, how I, um, I intend to get my music out. Because sometimes I'll be pushing myself back. I'll be, you know, delaying shit. Mm-hmm. Also, I want to, like, record some videos for some songs that I did for the tape with me and my, my man, she. Okay. And some other shit that I got, you know, that I got to actually record and do. Okay, so okay. basically just music okay and of course working on your album that's coming out in april and knowing the songs that are on said album right yeah of course course, okay all right all right all right so that's for you know the next year but just in general like where do you see yourself going what's next if we were to link up years from now and i were to interview you again where do you see yourself i see myself in what what you said what four or five years let's let's give it seven let's give it seven years Seven years, you link up with me again, backing out in a Lambo truck, chains on, successful, successful in all my past and my careers. I'm talking about YouTube, music, okay, me and Sean Book, busy, everything. I'm doing everything I, you know, I'm passionate about and I dream for. The Lambo truck and chain got it. I got you. You know, you got to. I'm, I'm okay. Not <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, okay, so I definitely see where you're headed. I think that you for sure you know where you want to go, so I think that's really dope. Is there anything else that you want for the people to know about you while we're here? Shit. Listen, I'm just saying I do it all and I stand tall. I might think you might think I'm a funny nigga, but she ain't funny about me. Other than the jokes I make, that's just it. But keep it a buck. I fuck with the show. I still need to think about my best ball. I'm not going to lie. I yeah. I mean, like, yeah. damn, you ain't know the song. All right, well, we still got a little time. True. Did you think of one? <sighs> no. Man, I gave you another chance, but it's it's all right. You'll be back. All right, y'all. So, um, shout out your, your handles, your Instagram. Your... Yo, follow me on Instagram, OG New. Um, Same thing for Twitter. Same thing for Snapchat. Same shit. Um, TikTok. YouTube. TikTok is OG New. Uh, Zero, you feel me? Uh, YouTube is OG the guy, you feel me? Stream my last song, that's remix, Brotherly Love, you feel me? I got a new song, which probably drop probably New Year's Eve. I got a new song, which drop New Year's Eve. And um, yeah, stream My Brother's Keeper. We dropped that earlier this year with my bro, she, you feel me? I really, you know, that's something I really put my heart and my passion with, with my friend. That's my my brother for the last 10 years, you feel me? That shit, that nigga annoying as fuck. But I love him. <laughs> what a shout out okay all right y'all so that is it for this interview thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one